Hello guys, this is your boy Ali Salanki and today we'll be going over some MCQ tips and tricks that you can use in your exams for getting a statistical advantage while guessing. I call this the intelligent guess method. Also, I will be giving you a formula through which you can calculate the risk and the reward and statistically determine if guessing is the right choice for a particular question. Remember to go over these points step by step and watch this video till the end as I'll be giving you some tips and tricks that I've personally used in various engineering exams like JE, CET and my friends have used to get into IITs, NITs, BITs and other prestigious colleges all over India. Now these tips and tricks can be used for any MCQ based exam whatsoever. Also remember if you can solve a question and you have enough time remaining then do not opt for guessing. Solve the questions fully and only when you have judged if you don't have enough time or if you can't solve a particular question then only go for this method. Now if you don't have any negative marking on a particular question and you don't know the answer to it then always use this method. But if there exists a negative marking scheme on a particular question then always calculate the risk before using this intelligent guess method. Also I have calculated the risk for all the major exams happening all over India. So if you find it in the description box below then you can skip this part. But if you want to go ahead with watching how I calculated it, then do watch this video in detail. Now let's look at the formula at hand. The raw formula is this. I'll be explaining this formula in detail. So stick with me till the end if this does not ring a bell to you. Pause this video and note this formula down as this will help you a lot. If after calculations using this formula, you get a number greater than zero, then always use the intelligent guess method. However, if you get a zero or a negative number, then do not opt for this method. Rather, try eliminating some options. Now let's go over this formula using an example that is the JE mains exam. So in the JE mains exam, you are awarded plus four marks for every correct option minus one mark for every wrong option and there are four options in total. So now let's plug this data into our formula. Using this formula, you can divide the plus four marks by the number of options that is four options and you'll get one. Now let's keep this aside. Now multiply four options minus one by four options into the negative marks that is one you'll get 3 by 4. Now subtract this 3 by 4 from the one that you had gotten previously and you will be left with 1 by 4. Now as you can see 1 by 4 is greater than 0 and that's why using the intelligent guess method in the JE mains exam will reap you benefits. Now let's go over the method in detail. The first thing that you can do is use the dimensional analysis method. Now this method is specifically used for the physics question paper. This method is as simple as checking the dimensions of all the options and comparing it with what's been asked in the question. For example, if the question is asking you to find the electric current, if you find an option which has amperes in it and the other options do not relate to amperes, then that one will be the correct option. Next method is the elimination method and this is as simple as removing all the options that can never be correct and coming down to only one option. Next is the back solving method or the substitution method. Now for this, let's go over to my computer. In this method, you substitute your preferred values in the given question and then match it with the options. So for example, we have a question right over here. Now in this question, we can assume the arithmetic progression and also we can assume the value of n. Now here, let's assume the arithmetic progression as 1, 2, 3, 4 and take n as equal to 3. Therefore, our question comes down to be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 into 3. That is 2 by 3. Now this can only be achieved by using these values in the first option itself. And that is why the first option is our correct option. 
Now the next tip is that most repeated option has a higher chance of being right. Now here we have four options and we have to choose between these four. Now the last three options are in grams and only one is in mg and that is why grams has a higher probability and you can eliminate the first option. Moreover, three is repeated twice that is in option A as well as in the option D. That is why the correct answer is three grams that is the option D. The next tip is that extreme values do not generally be the correct option. Use this method only in desperate times but this can also help you while guessing. Now what this essentially means is that if you have four options and one of the options has a value which is quite extreme, let's say 100 or 200 whereas the other three values are clustered around 50s then most probably the extreme valued option would not be the answer. The next tip that I have for you is that all of the above and both of these have a higher chance of being right. Statistically speaking, it has a 52% chance of being right. Now in contrast to this, the none of the above option is never usually the correct option. Also the last tip that I have for you is that the longer the description in the option, the better chance it has that it will be correct. What this essentially means is that if you see an option which explains the reason in detail then most probably that option will be the correct option. Now the next tip that I have for y'all and you might have heard this in various different coaching classes or by your teachers is that you should jump over the questions that you find difficult to solve and rather solve the easy questions first. Now I know most of y'all think that this does not actually save a lot of time. But trust me, even a second saved in an MCQ based exam will get you additional marks. Apart from that, the top notch MCQ based exams do not even require you to solve the entire question paper. You can get a very good score even if you solve the question paper partially. So always remember to aim for the easy questions first and then only jump to the difficult ones. This has another benefit as well. So when you jump over a difficult question and start solving another question, your brain subconsciously stores that difficult question and keeps thinking about it. So when you try to solve it the second time, after solving all the easier questions first, then you have a higher chance of getting that question. Also, what I did for my J mains exams was that I divided the entire time into three equal parts. For the first part, I would go over the entire question paper and try to solve whatever I can. This helped me to map the entire question paper in my brain and to know which part is easy and which part will cost me a lot of time. After this, in the second part, I would try to solve the easy to medium difficulty questions. Now this would constitute almost the entire paper. So I would have solved the entire paper in just two thirds of the time. After which I would try to go over the entire paper once again and try to solve the difficult questions now. And then I would save some time to go over my silly mistakes that I would have done in the question paper. And that's where most of our marks go. We know the entire method, we know the answer as well. But then we fail to see what's been asked in the question and end up marking the wrong answer. So to save yourselves from such silly mistakes, it is always better to go through your calculations once you are done with the question paper. Now the next tip is for people who go blank when they see a question paper. This generally occurs due to the exam pressure, stress or anxiety that can ruin all of your hard work. And to overcome this, I would suggest you to sleep properly for the last 7 days of your exam. I know that we all think we'll just learn everything on the last day by burning the midnight oil. But trust me, this does not work. If your sleeping schedule is not correct for the last week of your exam, then trust me, all of your hard work will go in vain and you'll even have a difficult time in solving the basic questions that you've been able to solve quite easily. So that's it for the video and by the way we have crossed over 150 subscribers and that's all thanks to you guys for all the love and support that you guys give to me. 
so please like this video share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel and also give me feedbacks in the comment section below it helps me grow a lot if you are a millennial or someone who likes self help channels or self growth channels do check out my channel as it has a lot of videos about it